Now we come to an important topic which is called the colligative properties properties of the solutions and we will be doing colligative properties and determination of molar mass determination of molar mass okay now what are colligative properties to start with okay these are the properties which depend on the number of particles and never on the nature of particles right so so the properties which depend on the number of particles of a solute and do not depend on and do not depend on the nature of particles of the solute are called colligative properties okay now what are some of the colligative properties some of the colligative properties are number 1 the lowering of vapor pressure the second is lowering of the freezing point third increase in the boiling point increase in the boiling point and the fourth is the osmotic pressure osmotic pressure fine are there other colligative properties too other than these not not that we study in solutions no no okay so now we we come to the first first of these properties which is the which is the relative lowering of vapor pressure okay the relative lowering of the vapor pressure now when we have a non volatile solute in a solvent how do things change if we have a non volatile solute 
in a solvent okay if we have a non volatile solute of the of the in a solvent and and we have been designating the the solvent let the solvent be designated by subscript 1 and the solute be designated by by the subscript 2 that we have been doing earlier also we we used the same same kind of nomenclature right now what happens the the partial pressure of the the partial pressure of the solution the partial pressure of the solution is equal to what solution so p1 is given by what it is x1 into 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 <coughs> p1 not they write the zero here so hmm it's very simple to understand not 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 there uh, not even something to understand see you see what happens if if this x is 1 that means if it's only the solvent and we have not mixed anything then x is x1 is equal to 1 and and my pressure will be the will be the partial vapor pressure of the pure solvent right where p1 not is the partial vapor pressure of the pure solvent obviously now what is the what is the change in pressure how by how much has the pressure decreased so so decrease in pressure due to the addition of and, and this is what this is what the partial vapor pressure right the partial vapor pressure of the solution is this the decrease in pressure due to addition of non volatile solute non volatile solute is what what is the decrease in pressure it is earlier when you had put nothing the vapor pressure was this the pure component minus whatever you have now correct and what is p1 this is equal to p1 not minus x1 p1 not okay now what is that p1 not into 1 minus x1 which is equal to p1 not into x2 into again, nothing to be explained this is the reduction earlier it was this now it became this after i added the solute and then nothing i have done only algebraic manipulations nothing else i have used i have just put that there so when it was pure it was this when i put something it became this okay so so i have just found out the decrease in pressure due to the addition so so earlier it was this now it became this so decrease is that okay so decrease is that and and that becomes equal to x2 
P1 naught. Correct. Now, it's a different matter that we are finding out relative lowering. Just try to understand the lowering, the amount by which it got lowered is directly dependent on X2, that is the mole fraction of the solute. 2 is being used for solute. So this is what? This is mole fraction of solute. This is the mole fraction of solute, right? Now to make it simpler, we say the relative lowering. What do you mean by relative? So you are taking it relative to something. And what is that something? With, with, with whose respect you are taking? That is the original. So I will say if I want the relative lowering of the vapor pressure is P1 naught minus P1 upon P1 naught. That becomes equal to X2. And X2 is the mole fraction of the solute. Right? And mole fraction of the solute, I know what it is. So, so that is equal to to the to the to n2 upon n1 plus n2 correct so this is delta p upon p1 naught in a sense so it is p1 naught minus p1 upon p1 naught right becomes that now what happens for a very 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 dilute solution for a dilute solution N2 is very very smaller than N1 okay N2 is very very smaller than N1 so so what happens it implies that n1 plus n2 becomes approximately equal to n1 is it not so what happens p1 naught minus p1 upon p1 naught becomes n2 upon n1 approximately okay and what is N2? What is N2? N2 is nothing but the number of moles of the solute. So it straightway starts, starts depending on the number of moles of the solute. But you should always keep this in mind. That this is a special case only for dilute solutions. This is for dilute solutions. Okay. So, to create this uniformity, I'll write this as relative lowering. Of, but but you understand even the lowering depends on it depends on the number of moles right we are taking relative lowering why because it straight away becomes equal to n2 by n1 that's all right n2 by n1 now now what happens what is n2 hmm? n2 we put some mass right i say so many grams of something was put into that. I, I do not talk in terms of moles, right? So you will have to convert it into moles. So it is W2 upon M2 and 
and m1 is obviously w1 upon m1 where 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 w2 is mass of solute correct and w1 is mass of solvent m2 is <coughs> molar mass of solute and m1 is molar mass of solvent okay so so i ultimately get p1 not minus p1 upon p1 not is equal to w2 upon m2 into m1 upon w1 fine now if someone tells me that your vapor pressure has gone down by so much after you put so many grams of the solute in so much of of solvent immediately i'll be able to tell i'll be able to tell tell the tell the molecular mass of whatever has been put in you understand so if someone gives me w2 i get w1 and m1 and and this okay the the depression in the vapor pressure i'll be able to tell the molecular mass of the solute that was put in so so this equation arising from the above is the working equation right fine now now let us try to try to see let us try to solve a question okay let us try to solve a question says that the vapor pressure of pure benzene at a certain temperature is 0.85 bar vapor pressure of pure benzene vapor pressure of pure benzene is 0.850 bar okay now a non volatile non electrolyte solid 0.5 gram a uh, non volatile non electrolytic what do we mean by that it does not split like in a cl you put it becomes na plus and cl minus right so there will be you put one mole they will become two moles when they go down into the water right so when added to when added to 39 grams of benzene c6x6 okay so what is the molecular mass 78 right 78 gram gram molecular mass now the vapor <coughs> pressure becomes vapor pressure of solution becomes 0.845 bar okay what is the molar mass of the solid find molar mass of the solute correct so i'll immediately use this my p1 not is 0.850 fine my p1 is 